we are done with pollination. What happens after that? We will discuss. Before that, we need to discuss some important points. See, pollination does not guarantee the deposition of the right type of pollen on the stigma. Often, the wrong type of pollen grain lands on the stigma. By wrong type, I mean that sometimes the pollen grains of rose can land on the stigma of lotus, which is the wrong type of pollen grain for lotus. Or sometimes the self-incompatible pollen grains can land on the stigma of a flower, which is again considered to be a wrong type. It is the pistil that has the ability to decide whether the pollen grain is wrong type or the right type. This ability of the pistil to either accept a pollen grain or reject a pollen grain is a result of a continuous chemical dialogue between the stigma and the pollen grain. Remember that if the pollen grain is rejected, then the story ends there. But what if the pollen grain is accepted? If the pollen grain is accepted, it is followed by a sequence of events. So, as soon as the pollen grain is accepted, the pollen tube starts forming. As the pollen tube is formed, the contents of the pollen grains come in the pollen tube. If you observe, then you can clearly see that the contents of the pollen grains are restricted only at the apex of the pollen tube. The pollen tube elongates and grows through the tissues of the stigma and the style and it ultimately reach the ovary. It is the filiform apparatus that is located in the micropylar end of the synergids that guides the entry of the pollen tube inside the ovary and simultaneously the ovule. Now remember my dear students that in case of 60% of angiosperms, the pollen grains are shed in the two cell stage. In these 60% of angiosperms, as the pollen tube germinates through the tissues of the stigma, the generative cell undergoes mitotic division and it forms the two male gametes. But in the remaining 40% where the pollen grains are shed in the three cell stage from the very beginning there is the presence of the two male gametes. Now students we will be discussing a very crucial point here. Please pay attention. It is very important for you answering your neat papers. See the pollen tube can enter the ovule either through the micropyle or through the integuments or through the chalaza. If it is entering through the micropyle, it is known as porogamy. If it is entering through the integuments, it is known as mesogamy. And if it is entering through the chalaza, it is known as the chalazogamy. But the pollen tube can enter the embryo sac only through the micropylous side. So if the question asked is, the position from which the pollen tube enters the ovule from, your answer can be chalaza, micropyle or integument. But if the question asked is, the position from where the pollen tube enters the embryo sac, your answer should be the micropylous side. So my dear students, right from the deposition of the pollen grain on the stigma and the entry of the pollen tube inside the ovule is known as the pollen pistil interaction. I hope the pollen pistil interaction is crystal clear to you and you answer brilliantly all the questions that is asked from this particular section. So students, what do you think? Can you germinate the pollen grains in laboratory conditions? Yes, you can do it. 
and it is known as the in vitro germination of the pollen grain. I know this particular section is not there in your NCRT, but it can be asked for your board practicals as well as in your neat question papers. So let's get started. To study the in vitro germination of pollen grains, we will have to take a glass slide. On this glass slide, you have to dust the pollen grains of either pea, chickpea, balsam or trotillaria. And on this glass slide, you have to take 10% sucrose solution along with boric acids and some salts of calcium, magnesium and potassium. Then you have to wait for 15 to 30 minutes. After that, you can observe that the pollen tube has germinated. This particular experiment is known as the hanging drop experiment. I hope this experiment is very clear to all of you. So students, do you think that it is possible to make a plant with desired characteristics? Yes, it is possible. It is possible to make a plant with superior qualities with the knowledge of pollen pistil interaction. And this can be achieved by a method which is known as artificial hybridization. Artificial hybridization students has a very important role in the plant breeding programs. So let's see what exactly is the process of artificial hybridization. So see, for the process of artificial hybridization, you have to take desired pollen grains and you have to protect the stigma from undesired pollen grain. And this is achieved by the process of emasculation and bagging. So let's understand what these processes are. To begin with, let's understand emasculation. So here we have a bisexual flower. From this bisexual flower, it is important to remove the anther with the help of some forceps in the floral bud itself, even before the anther dehyses. This process of removing anther from the floral bud is known as emasculation. So think about it. If you remove the anther from a bisexual flower, then this flower will get converted into a female flower. Once it gets converted into a female flower, then you cover this flower with suitable size of butter paper. This method of covering the flower with suitable size butter paper is known as bagging. And then we wait. We wait till the stigma matures. Once the stigma matures, we remove the butter paper and on the stigma, we put our desired pollen grains. And then we again cover the flower with a butter paper. This process is known as rebagging. After that, we wait till the fruit formation. So in this way, my dear students, we get plants with desired characteristics. And this method is known as artificial hybridization. Now let me tell you something. If the flowers are unisexual, then the process of emasculation is not required. Because in unisexual flowers, from the very beginning, you have separate female flowers and you have separate male flowers. So this was all about artificial hybridization. Hope you can answer all the questions from this particular section.